I was very interested to read, uh, of course, Harry Clifton is a novelist, is a, yes, a writer. <laughs> Um, and he, in the book, has to do publicity for his books. Yes. And there are certain rules that he has to stick to, and there are certain yes. frustrations he has with interviews about yes. books. And I wondered how much of your frustrations with interviews about your novels are sort of bleed into this experience. Well, I, I decided to make Harry a novelist on the grounds that it was a subject I hadn't touched in any of my books. And I thought people would be fascinated about what an author goes through, how yes. they physically write the book. How they go. It's different for everyone, of course. But also bring in the touring of a country, say the United States of America. When Cain and Abel came out, I had to do 17 cities mm. in 21 mm. days. You don't do that nowadays. You do tweet, blog, and Facebook. And you don't even go to the United States that, of America. Isn't that better? Well, it's much better. They've worked out, why spend all the money sending you to San Francisco and then bringing you to Dallas, when you can do three tweets and you've hit ten times as many people. One of your basic rules of writing is, is that you, you, the, the reader mustn't be able to guess, really, what is on Correct. the next page. Okay. But when you've written, how many novels? More than 17. a dozen. Seventeen. Seventeen. When you've written seventeen, that's an awful lot of pages and an awful lot of things to guess at. Do you ever sit there during the eight hours, I think it is, that you spend mm. writing every day, do you ever sit there for a long time and think, what on earth uh, am yeah. I going to, what twist can possibly come next? I never know more than three pages ahead. Right. I mean, six would be a miracle. And each morning I get up and say, please, can we do it again today? The twists and the turns come on the day. For example, at the end of the first book, the press were very generous about the sudden twist at the end of the book. It came that morning. And when people don't ever say to me, oh, I saw it coming, Jeffrey, I saw it coming, Jeffrey, because I didn't see it myself. <laughs> and I, it's a hell of a risk, because some authors plan out every chapter. And you can paint yourself into a corner, surely. Oh, certain, oh, two or three times have. But the great uh, Corley Smith, the greatest editor of all, who edited J.D. Salinger, said, he said, paint yourself into a corner because the reader will never be able to work out how to get out. And if you take three or four days getting out, it doesn't matter because they'll be on to the next page. Mm. And I think that was shrewd advice. Um, you've served your time. You did your stint in prison. Um, has that changed anything about how you write? Obviously, you wrote about that in your prison diaries, but the contacts you made, the material that you picked up for your fiction, has that changed? Well, anything? you can't not meet people, whoever they yeah. are, and not be influenced and, of course, I met so many interesting people from different backgrounds who'd had a very different life to mine. Of course they would get in the books. But that's true of, of anywhere you mm -hmm. go in life, whoever you meet. You're, if you're a, a real author, you're picking up stories every day. You're watching people every day. So if I write about two television interviewers on a breakfast show, I'm not going to make it up. I'm going to remember this seat. I'm going to remember the room. I'm going to remember the way you sit and how long it takes. Hopefully it wouldn't be too racy if you're writing about... About you two? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Upmarket. <laughs>